Welcome back, everybody, to Buckeye Bar, guys, here on Buckeye Bar Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm John. And tonight's date is uh, Friday, October 11th, 2024. And uh, we're getting ready for the the big matchup with the, the Oregon Ducks uh, tomorrow night in Eugene, Oregon. Um, so we'll quickly go through um, this game. Uh, it won't be a, a terribly long show tonight. Uh, we'll, so we'll get a, get a good one in tonight for tomorrow's matchup and uh and then we will call it a night so you know so obviously both teams are undefeated number two versus number three so this is a big matchup this is the you know we had georgia bama a couple weeks ago and now we're gonna have the next really big matchup of the year so you know so very interesting game i believe i saw at ohio state as of what yesterday or the day before they were a four-point favorite so um you know so they're getting the they're getting the the favorite mark going into the this game, but you know in the Big Ten conference so far this year, um, you know the team that has to travel uh, two plus time zones um, is one and eight. So with the one being Indiana, who beat UCLA in the Rose Bowl, um, but everybody else has lost. So. That's going against Ohio State. It'll be interesting how the the travel fares. Uh, Ryan Day said this week that they're not going to treat it like any differently. That you know this is just uh, they were leaving uh, today on Friday and getting out there. Um, you know th- they would have got out there this even Oregon time and uh, and then they were just going to treat the game you know on the, as a normal schedule. You know try to keep their bodies on East Coast time, which. Uh, Good luck to that one. Uh, you know, I've never personally been out to the West Coast, but I, from everybody I've ever talked to, uh, it's uh, very hard uh, to try to stay on your uh, on your time zone when you get out there and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting how they deal with that one. But uh, all right, let's get started. So offensively, you know, Ohio State. I mean. What can you say? The offense has been, you know, damn good the whole season. You know, last week against Iowa, a little shaky in the first uh, half, even though they moved the ball at will. It's just, you know, they made, uh, you know, they had a, you know, Jeremiah Smith had a bad fumble. You know, they had a interception thrown. They had a bad, probably Chip Kelly's worst call of the season was, uh, you know, that fourth and two stop. So, you know, it it took them a minute to get going, but then they, uh, they started, you know, scoring fairly easily in the third quarter uh last week so basically looked like how they looked uh you know how they've looked this year so offensively you know you know i mean they've looked great there's not really much to argue about on that one yeah offense i mean it's just end of the day it's just that was execution or i'm sorry it wasn't i mean it wasn't play calling it was a lot of just shooting yourself in the foot you know it was a lot of just stupid mistakes that you shouldn't be making uh fumbles like you said bad play call interception so they were fine what i i know a couple buckeye ban- fans um freaked out a little bit that uh iowa was extending drives but i mean if you look at the big picture when they had like four first downs or something like that like it was nothing really they kept caleb johnson completely um well i guess that's on defense but yeah offensively buckeyes look good man they just they no. they could have won that game 56 to nothing had they really wanted to or had they really you know had they executed a little bit better in the first half yeah so you know a different type of defensive you know challenge you know Oregon's going to be this week you know they obviously have a lot of you know pretty well stacked and there's uh questions whether uh what you tomorrow you're uh your microphone. I think you hit the mic. Okay. Now it's better. Yeah. Okay. Be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So they're saying Jordan Birch will be possibly out. I don't know that he's kind of a, a decision. It sounded like he might have got hurt this week, and practice. So we're, we're kind of waiting on him. But you know, you know, their defense is uh, their defense is very good. They they have a veteran secondary, a lot like ours. But you know with more fill and necessarily those guys haven't played as long as some of our guys have played with each other. You know, obviously we have some new guys too. When you think about downs and stuff, um, 
I would say that, you know, so the secondary is very good. Their defensive line is, I mean, it's very, very athletic, very loaded that, you know, Cameron, who was on um, Michigan State, you know, I believe last year and he's transferred. I mean, he's been almost impossible Uh, this year. Uh, Harmon, yeah, he's been uh, very, almost uh, very hard to block this year for most uh, offensive lines. He's definitely uh, uh, been a force to reckon with in the middle. So it'll be interesting to see how our interior holds up against him. And then you got Burt. So we're, we're kind of waiting to see, you know, whether he plays or not, you know, how is he looking and stuff like that? You know, it was a very good, it was a good sight last week, how well our defensive line did. Uh, You know, Iowa was the first big uh, defensive line that uh, we played. So our offensive line looked very good against them. So this is the next step. Now, this is a, Another very good offensive line that's taken it up a few notches, you know, much more athletic than, um, you know, Iowa's defensive line. So, you know, so this will be the next big challenge, you know, how well, you know, we'll get to see how well our tackles do against, you know, better maybe speed rushers and we'll see how the interior holds up. And, you know, I've said, you know, a lot this year, you know, to you privately, probably on a couple of our episodes that, you know, this team's going to go as far as the offensive line is going to take them offensively. So, you know, it'll be very interesting how, how they uh, handle, I think this challenge. Yeah, this, I mean, this is going to be the best defense they face. This is going to be the most complete best offense that Oregon's going to face. So it's going to just come down to probably going to come down to the trenches. Like you're saying, you know, can they hold up? Can they keep Will Howard protected? Give him time to make plays. Uh, Is Chip Kelly going to be able to be in his element? I mean, the one thing, you know, he's done a lot of moving the ball side to side, you know, which we've loved. We're like, how are you ever going to be able to defend them going 53 yards wide? But Dan Lanning, man, that's uh, his or or his Georgia teams. That was something that they were, uh, they excelled at was going sideline to sideline, making, you know, plays and, eating up those quick spread teams. So it's going to be interesting how it plays out. Um, I think Ohio state, I mean, Ohio State's lines up for the challenge. I think, I mean, they're, they're all pretty solid, you know, Donovan Jackson, uh, not, and not trying to call anyone out by name, but he's just, you know, he's got to be on top of his game. He's going to have his hands full there in the middle. Of course, Tagra or Austin Saravelt, whoever's, you know, getting the bulk of that play at the right guard, they're going to have their hands full. Uh, McLaughlin, like you said, like that Harmon, he's a, he's the real deal that came from Michigan state. So they got to, you know, get bodies on him. Don't let him eat up too many people. Don't let him be too disruptive because you gotta, you know, if he's living in the backfield, it's going to be a rough day. Yeah. At least they've seen him before. And I know he, he actually did okay last year against Ohio state in that game. Um, so, but at least they've seen him before. So, you know, they can at least scout him, you know, try to figure out some of his moves and different things like that, you know, so at least that's happened. So there is some familiarity with some of the, our defense alignment with him or offense alignment with him. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. I think probably, I think the biggest thing is how can we get the running game going? You know, you, you look back at the Boise state game against uh, Oregon. Uh, what is it? Is it Austin Genty? Is that how they, I mean, he's is a, a, Ashton Genty. Ash, Ashton Genty. Uh, I mean, he's a, uh, He's a high, he's possibly a Heisman, you know, potential up there. He's a very good running back and, you know, he had a good game against them and they had a very hard time, uh, you know, stopping him. They've done a little bit better against the run, but that was obviously the best running back that they've played so far right. this year. So, you know, we'll see how, how they handle, you know, both Quinshawn and Trey and this game um, and can Ohio State do some of the stuff that he was able to do against them because obviously Ohio state, you know, nothing against Boise, Ohio state's just a lot deeper, a lot more, you know, depth, a lot, a lot more athleticism across the board. So you got to figure if, you know, if they are able to really get the ball moving on the ground, then that is a, like how Boise did, then that's a lot bigger issues against Oregon than even that game was. And Ohio State's got a much better offensive line than what Boise State has, and that's all Boise State can do. You know, that's not even accounting for the fact that I understand Will Howard's had some question. I don't even want to say questionable. It's just, you know, the jury's still out on his downfield passing ability, just if he sees the play develop quick enough or not. But 
we've seen now he does go on sideline to sideline. I mean, we're, you still got Carnell Tate and Mecca Buka and Jeremiah Smith that are going to be taking the field also. So let alone having a better offensive line than Boise State, running backs that probably, no, they're probably not as good, but you're still talking about two of the top 10 running backs in the country yeah. behind that offensive line. A quarterback that can pick up things with his legs, we've seen him do it before. And, you know, even if they are playing get better against the run, you still got to deal with all that other stuff on the outside. Yeah. And I mean, I, I like, you know, their, their corners. I think they're fine, but I don't know. I mean, they're not, you know, like Jabbar Muhammad is five ten. Um, who's their other one? Reed. Nico Reed is 5'10". You know, he's going to go up against Jeremiah Smith, mm-hmm. who's 6'3", 215. So, and this is nothing against these guys. Um, you know, Brandon Johnson, that's their slot, 5'10". I mean, it, Mecca's the smallest of all the three of our stars. He's 6'1", 205. Like, he's not a small guy. I mean, I think he might have dropped some weight in the offseason because he definitely looks yeah. a lot quicker. Or, you know, he was able to work out a little bit more. And But, yeah, I mean, Carnell Tate's 6'3". Jeremiah Smith, 6'3". Mecca, 6'1". Like, these aren't easy matchups physically for those cornerbacks. And that's not saying, I mean, there's a lot more to being a corner than just being, you know, Mm -hmm. a big guy. We've seen it with, there's been small Ohio State corners in the back that have been just unstoppable in big moments because it doesn't matter. They got that dog in them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, they got the technique and they're not afraid to make the play, but, um, I mean, that's, that's just the thing. I'm, and I don't know, you know, they might be tougher than Ohio state when push comes to shove and that could happen. I don't think so, but the fact remains though, it's not just we've cleaned up our run defense. There's yeah. still so much more that goes along with it. Yeah. I actually think that's probably, I actually, I think where this game is really going to be won is I think Ohio state on both sides of the ball. I think they're just, I think they're going to be more physical on the outsides. I think, I think we are much more physical than them receiver to cornerback. And I think our corners are going to be much more physical to their receivers. And then when we get to the other side of the ball, you know, there was, they have a lot of small, like similar to their corners. They have a very under, a lot of undersized receivers and stuff like that. And, you know, they're very similar to Ohio state, how they approach it with, you know, they try to go much more, you know, sideline to sideline and, you know, and we'll I'll get to that, you know, here in a minute, but, you know, so I, I do, I definitely think offensively, you know, I think we're, I think the trenches, I, I know I, I've seen a lot of people kind of make the point that, you know, it's kind of the same old, same old, you know, Ohio State's going to bully these guys in the trenches. I don't necessarily think that. I actually think this is a very good matchup. Both offense lines and defense alliance are both good. And I think that, you know, they're going to be very, you know, so I don't think, I think there's a lot of push there, you know, between the two and stuff like that, where I think Ohio State's really I think above them is that even though their secondary is good, I just think our receivers are just going to be a lot more physical than them. And I don't know how well that they're going to be able to, you know, handle that for an entire game. And then, you know, dealing with the running backs at the same time. And so that's kind of what I want to see. You know, I I really want to get this running game going to see if we can, you know, do similar things like to what Boise was doing and stuff like that. And then, you know, continue to do what we've been doing on the outside. You know, I don't know which way Ryan and Chipper, you know, did they show the runs last week with Will Howard because they wanted Oregon to practice them this week and they're not going to really do it? Or did they show the stuff last week because they're going to start bumping it up even more now? And, you know, and what plays do they have built off on some of those runs? You you know they're going to have a pass now in the things for one of those quarterback power runs where he probably, he's going to probably fake coming up into the pocket and then he's going to, you know, throw it up to Jeremiah Smith across the middle or something like that. They're going to have something, you know, designed, you know, coming off one of those quarterback powers that they were running with him last week. So, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how they do that and how can they exploit that. Um, so, I, I definitely, when you look at the entire offense against Oregon's defense as a whole, I definitely like Ohio State's chances. You know, I think that they should be able to move the ball. I know mm-hmm. Oregon's gotten a, better as the seasons went on, but I, 
I mean, I think Michigan State could have moved the ball last week against them if Aiden Childs was just if he's just a little bit more accurate and stuff like that. You know, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of opportunities Oregon gave them, and it's just you know they just didn't have the offense. But you know, we saw Idaho do different things against them, even though that game was you know Oregon just shot themselves in the foot a lot in that game. You know, Boise obviously you know played them very tough. You know, you know they handled Oregon State pretty easily. Uh, you know, but. I think there's definitely holes there in the Oregon defense that if if they if the offensive line can keep the defensive line off of um, off of Will Howard, I think that and you know give the running backs the lanes that they need. That I I do think that there's places within the back seven of Oregon that can be exploited. Yeah, I mean I I, I could definitely subscribe to that thought process there. All right, uh, you want to go over who we think, you know, players of the game and stuff offensively is going to be, you know, any of the big, big moments, you know, like, what are we thinking here? Well, I, I mean, I think you are on to something with um, being, you, you know, that some of this could be the size difference on the outside. I definitely could see that. Um, it, it, Running the ball, you know, Judkins and Trey, I think they're going to do fine. I mean, obviously, Gente did really, really great against Oregon, so it could be them. I just have a feeling that it's going to be the Emeka Buka show this week that, you know, he is going to be that guy in the slot. I think he's kind of just the, the difference of that, not to mention, I mean, talent-wise, he probably, I mean, he's probably a little bit below Smith, you know, trajectory wise yeah. yeah. for career, but I mean, he's the second most talented receiver probably in this game, at least in my opinion. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of Oregon guys that argue with that point, but, uh, you know, he'll get a slot corner on him or whatever. You'll get him into mismatched matches and we know in Mecca, he looks faster. He looks stronger. He's blocking the hell out of everybody this year. So don't be surprised to see him do some design run stuff or, you know, mm -hmm. getting the ball in creative ways to make plays. So, yeah, I definitely think I think Emeka is going to have uh, Pacific Northwest homecoming for the ages and he's going to be the man. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Um, I think it's going to be the I mean, it's I think it's going to be the running game as a whole. So I don't want to necessarily pick one or the over. I, obviously, yeah, quinshawn has been the kind of more the bellwether, you know, so far. But, I mean, they both have been so hard to, you know, they're just, it's just amazing. Like, I'm, like, really, really impressed with Carlos Lachlan. Like, you know, I just think that yeah. he's, like, the physicality that Trey's running with this year, that he's not done, you know, up to this point, like, has just been, like, out of this world. I mean, I knew Quinshawn was a physical runner. I'm not saying that, you know, Quinshawn's more physical than he was last year because I never wa I didn't really watch a lot of old Miss games, you know, so I, I just knew what Quinshawn's stats were at the end of the year when he came to Ohio, when he decided to transfer, you know, I looked those up, so I didn't really, you know, go back and watch any of that stuff, but just how the both of them are just like running and they're just running with authority and stuff like that. And I just think, again, with our receivers, I just think how it's just, I think it's going to add up in this game that you know, once you get past that defensive line, there's just, it's a lot of blows that those guys are going to be taking in this game. And I just, I think that Ohio state will just wear them down and wear them down. And then you're just going to be in such a threat for those, for those passes and stuff like that. And, you know, Carnell Tate's back and how are you, you know, basically their third corner is probably going to be on him or whatever. And like, you know, how are they going to, I mean, you know, the best corner is going to be on Jay on uh, the outside is going to be on Jeremiah Smith. But is that second guy then and the other second guy on the outside? Is he ever going to is he going to be able to cover Carnell Tate? Carnell Tate has actually ran free fairly well this year, you know, because it's just so hard to cover everybody else. So, you can you cover know, everybody. So starting with the running backs, I just think the running backs are going to continue to open up this offense like they've been. So I, I, I just think that they're going to have a big game, the two running backs, um, you know, probably. Quinshawn will still be the workhorse, but I could see this be the, you know, uh, I could see Trey breaking a big one in this game. I could see them getting them into the passing game this week. I, I think somewhere that kind of similar to us, you know, a lot of times that, you know, I think their linebackers are the, probably where they're like most susceptible on their defense. So I, I, I would be interested to see how, how, you know, Chip tries to, you know, go at them, you know, yeah. so 
I, I definitely I, I definitely think Quinshawn's gonna have a big game and Trey behind him. Okay. Definitely. All right. So the defense. So yeah. The, go ahead. Yeah, you know, you say what you're gonna say. No, I'm just defensively, I mean, my first matchup I'm looking at, um, I'm probably look like Tyleek Williams in the middle. I just I think that Whereas, you know, they have, uh, is it Eric Harmon that came over from Michigan State? I can't think of his first name, but, uh, you know, Tyleek is probably the the weak part of their offensive line is their interior yeah. offensive mm-hmm. line. And that's where, you know, Tyleek, I mean, he, I'm looking at him on the right guard, Marcus Harper. He's probably the worst guy on that offensive line. And I, it's, you know, I, I don't know if everyone's healthy or not. I'm just looking at, you know, their stats and everything. I mean, I haven't seen a ton of Oregon play, but man, Tyleek's going to be on him a lot. You know, that's mm-hmm. going to be straight up on him. And we know Tyleek, Tyleek's gotten a hell of a lot better over the last two seasons as a run stopper, especially this year. But Tyleek, for a big man, he is an exceptional pass rusher. And, so that's, I mean, that's, that's where I, I look to first and on the defensive line. Um, you know, Jack Sawyer's had a really good year on pressures. Ty Leak's, you know, there with him. Hamilton is a big, strong cat. He's going to be going against the, you know, the, the interior offensive line as well. And then JT, I mean, I think he's had a tough year, but Dylan Gabriel likes to do a lot of check downs and a lot of stuff really close to the line of scrimmage. And we know JT can be pretty lethal. Uh, passes that are uh, close to the line of scrimmage. So who knows? I mean, he could really, this could be, this could be like that Penn state game from two years ago for him. Yeah. And it's, you know, you think about it's a Pacific Northwest game for him too. You know, this could be a big one for him. Yeah. Uh, You know, he wants a, absolutely. He wants a ball out, you know, coming back, you know, he's from Washington. I think, you know, speaking about Ty Leak, I definitely think Ty Leak's the difference maker. I mean, we saw that last week against Iowa. I mean, Caleb Johnson cut him in that game. I mean, he couldn't do anything in that game. I mean, he has two big runs in the game, and that's it. And, you know, one of them is against the second-team defense. So it's like, I mean, it was just, you you saw it right there, just how much of a difference maker is. And I think, I definitely think he's going to be in, you know, Dylan, in Gabriel's face. Um you know, Gabriel's very prone to making mistakes and stuff like that when, you know, you know, he makes he makes some really questionable throws at times and stuff like that. He's a he's a good athlete. You he has know, a good arm. You know, he's got a good arm. He's going to he's going to be able to challenge Ohio State with, you know, his feet. And so that'll be interesting to see how they defend that, because, you know, they, they've had a couple issues this year with quarterbacks that have been able to move the ball a little bit on the ground with themselves. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they, how they, how they work through that, you know, but I definitely think that again, I think this offensive line is pretty good with Oregon's offensive line. You know, it, it just, there are some weak points in the interior, you know, and so it'll be interesting to see how, um, how they're able to deal with Ty Leak. If Ty Leak's getting through there against them, you know, then, you know, they're, I think they're going to have a hard game in this one. And, you know, Ryan Day did mention this week in his press conference that they are talking about keeping Tyleek on the field during the Rushman packages, too, because he is one of the best lot rushers. So you might as well. Yeah. No, I mean, I can't see any fault in that. I mean, even last year against Notre Dame, I mean, not, not for nothing. The best offensive lineman on the field was Joe Alt, but. My goodness, man, when Tyleek went up against him, he, he handled him. I mean, he, he held his own against the guy. So, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure even if he gets lined up on that right tackle for Oregon that, uh, what's his name, Cornelius. I mean, he, him and Simmons are probably the two best linemen on the field or linemen in this game. But, you know, I, I don't, Tyleek, I, he could. He can make that difficult for him too, but I mean, I, I really like his, I like his matchup and Ty's matchup against the middle of this Oregon offensive line. Conversely, um, I'm a little worried about that tight end Terrence Ferguson, Ferguson against our mm-hmm. linebackers. So I that guess was- that's just, that's going to just be something how we see how it goes. I mean, obviously Sonny's the, he has the size to, to play with him. So yeah, I'm definitely nervous about, 
I'm I'm nervous the way you know Oregon's going to want to attack. I mean, it's similar to how Ohio State wants to attack offensively. That you know, how are the linebackers going to hold up in space? You know, that's always been that's been the question mark for several years, even pre Knowles. You know that yeah. you know how do the line how will the linebackers hold up in space? So I mean, I don't know. Like you know that that definitely worries me a little bit too, but. The linebackers every game this year, and I know that, I mean, you could say, well, t- the games, I mean, they haven't played in Oregon yet, but they, once they make their adjustments, they have gotten better in every game. So it's like, mm-hmm. there's been several games where they've started off, you know, kind of shaky and stuff like that. But as the game has went on, they've gotten better and they've settled down and they're seeing everything a lot better. So, you know, it's just, again, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, Similar to that, if the Oregon's got some movement and momentum early in the game that, you know, they settle in and they figure out what they're doing and, you know, they kind of, uh, you know, shut it down stuff. I And I think probably with that, you know, now moving on to the secondary, I think the biggest thing I think Knowles probably has to do in this game is he's got to let the secondary play a little bit. Like, you know, I think Oregon's offense is not a down the field offense and, you know, th- Press them a lot more. You got to be like we've said. We got to be physical. You know, I think that's where this game is going to be won with the physicality on the outside. And I think we are much more of a physical secondary compared to the receivers. So challenge them. Get Dylan Gabriel out of his mindset and stuff like that. Take those throws away from him because if you give maybe that, give a second or more right. to the defensive line, you can get to these guys. You Make, can get to them. Right. Exactly. Make him double clutch. Yeah. And then you can get to them. And you, like you said, I think our, you know, our secondary is a more physical unit than what their receivers are. We haven't, they haven't really been tasked with it, but also, I mean, let's face it from where they've come, you know, from where they were in 2022, that they let all those, you know, busted plays happen. I mean, ransom, the guy has gotten a lot smarter as a safety. We know that he's a depth, like a depth, like he can, he can cover. He knows what he's looking at. He can back up someone that's playing press man. Caleb Downs knows how to dissect plays. He is a very athletic free safety. I'm very comfortable with him being in the back of that defense with other people playing press man in front of him. So I feel very comfortable with the safeties cleaning things up or, you know, the linebackers. I mean, they should be, <coughs> excuse me, they should be, um, athletic enough that they can clean up too. If you know, something short gets by, but like you said, they don't look for really long downfield passes. So give them some, give them some heat at the line, man. And then let them let your defensive line go eat. Yeah. And and this is the type of game with how good our offense has played this year. This is the type of game. If you give up a score or two here or there on a quick strike or stuff like that, you have the firepower offensively, you know, to get it back. And so I I would take my chances, man. I would take my chances, be aggressive, bring your corners up on these guys and, you know, out muscle them at the line of scrimmage. And I think you have the capability. I mean, Hancock, Iggy and Burke are all tough dudes. And then, you know, when you think about that ransom and downs too, I mean, there's a lot of. There's a lot of power there that, you know, and like I said, on the other side of the ball, where I just think our receivers outmatch their secondary too much in physicality, I think it's the same on this side of the ball. So, you know, go at them and stuff like that. And, you know, let's see if uh, that forces Gabriel to make some mistakes, which he's prone to do, you know, once he gets some pressure put on him. So, you know, let's let's see how. That's how I would attack them if I yeah. if I was Knowles. I would, I would just I would really force them to try to throw the ball on you down the field, and you know, and see if they can do it. Yeah, agreed. All right, so I'm thinking, you know, I know we've talked about him in this. I I think the difference maker defensively is going to be Ty Leak. I think I could see him getting two sacks in this game and just being a force to reckon with you know, in the middle of that defense and I was so impressed with him last week, you know, how well he shut down Caleb Johnson, you know, that, that was a good Iowa de- offensive line. And that was, you know, obviously, you know, he's a very good running back and, you know, it was just, 
you could just tell the difference of uh, what that defensive line is with him in the game. So I, I, that's definitely, you know, I think that's where I think he's going to be just a just a pure disruptor in this game. We're not going to see a lot of four three in this game. We've seen it for the last three weeks, something yeah. like that. Two weeks, two three weeks, um, two weeks. Okay, so I. I it's hard to say because Jordan Hancock's had such limited snaps. So it's hard for me to be like, Jordan Hancock's going to be the man. I mean, he's going to have his hands full in the slot with that Tez Johnson. That kid's electric, but he's small. So, I mean, again, like, you're they're fans at Ohio State, too. So you stay on the guy. I mean, the size difference is going to matter something. So I like that, or I'm, I'm intrigued by that matchup, I should say, because that Tez Johnson is electric. But, um, I think it's going to be a Lathan Ransom game. I think, you know, the safeties are going to have to step up big, but I think they're the met, like the two dudes for the job. So mm-hmm. I'm completely confident with them. Um, I mean, I'd, we'll see I, the secondary. I don't know. I don't know the corners, what they're going to give up though. Cause like over oh, saying, man, if they can come up in these guys' faces, I, it's going to be a lot different. You know, it's just a lot different intensity and athleticism and just size and what these Oregon uh, receivers have matched up this year. So I, I like the matchup in the secondary, but I think ransom is going to be, you know, the guy that cleans a lot of this up, maybe gets a pick six in this game. Yeah. And how, you know, we've talked about, you know, this, you know, and it's kind of seems like how Knowles, when you talk about adjustments, you know, everybody kind of gets uh, been a little like upset about some of the stuff that they've given up in early games. But he always, every game this year, he's brought the corners up as the game goes on. It's like he, and I don't know if he purposely does this or not, but it just kind of feels like he kind of lets you get into your groove and think that you're doing something, you know, you're accomplishing something, and then he takes that away. Like I think he kind of lulls people into like their game plan, and then, you know goes to stop then stops it and it's too late for them to change their game plan like yeah. it's hard to make adjustments once you know you've already got settled into your game plan so it's been kind of weird how they do it it's like you know they've been kind of very bend don't break early in the game and then they really tighten up as the game goes on so you know i gotta figure that's probably going to be similar how that goes that uh, you know he's gonna try to see what they're gonna throw at him and then he's gonna you know, make his adjustments and come at him. So, you know, this will be a very interesting matchup. I mean, both these offenses are just, they have a lot of good players. But again, I just think Ohio State's physicality in secondary receivers against secondary on both sides of the ball is where this game is going to get won because I just think that that's where we really outmatch them, in my opinion. And that's how I would attack them on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I mean, I, games come down to the trenches, and I do think maybe I would I would say a wash on the defensive line. I think our offensive line's better though, and even if it's by the smallest of margins, but it's gonna be tight. You know, that's gonna be tightly contested on both sides. So yeah, I think the difference. I I kind of agree with you. I think the difference is going to be on the outsides there. Um, because it is going to be hell in the trenches in this game. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a great football game because of that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I just think the, you know, who can, who can get the ball to the outside and make those plays. I mean, again, I think they have a fine secondary on their side, but you know, five ten, 170 pounds against Jeremiah Smith. I, and I get like the, you could be a small guy and still be a great cover corner, but genetics can only do so much, you know, for you. Like there's gotta be, I mean, you can just high point things and you're going to have a hell of a day against the guy. So we've now, and and we've seen now how many times that, you know, you just throw it up to him and he can catch. And he don't even need two hands to do it. Like, (laughs) and, but, and then you, when you throw in a Boca and Carnell Tate too, it's just like, it's a lot of like, you know, Carnell Tate is just like, like, it's like he's the forgotten man. And he's like, you know, I mean, the guy could be uh, number one in a lot of teams in this country. Yeah, Arnell. he would be he'd be the number one for Oregon, in my opinion. I mean, it's nice to have a 6'3 dude running for you. 
Parnell Tate is going to be, have the quietest seven to 800 yard receiving year in the history of college football. Like, yeah. yeah, it's just, I mean, when you got, you know, that freak on the other side of him, I mean, what, when Calvin Johnson was what, uh, Megatron. Yeah. So I, I think I heard somebody refer to, uh, um, Jeremiah Smith is Optimus Prime, so I, I like this. <laughs> but yeah, yeah when, you, when you got that dude on the other side, I mean, it's just like he overshadows a lot of people. He has a very large shadow, so there's not much you can you can do about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I definitely I like that. There, you know, I got some pause when it comes to our linebackers against that really good tight end. But at the same point. Hit some guys at the line of scrimmage, make Gabriel take a second before he can, you know, let go of that ball and see what you can, you know, what you can disrupt and what you can do. Yeah. All right. So what's your thing? What are you thinking score wise? What is Ohio State? A three and a half point favorite? Yeah, it was something like that. I know they bounced between, I think they were a three and then they've been a four. So it's been right around in there. This game, I mean, this game is, this is a game Ryan Day, even though he doesn't need to win it to win a national title, he doesn't need to win it to beat Michigan at the end of the year. I mean, these are the more important things, right? He doesn't need to win this game to win the Big Ten. Ryan Day has this stigma, though, that he can't win big games. Yeah. And I don't know if that's fair. And I mean, he's a young coach. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to win big games. Dan Lanning has, Dan Lanning has the same stigma though. So it's like uh, Dan Lanning though. He's the next one, you know, he, yeah. he's going to be the future of Alabama or Georgia. Ryan Dave's like, he can't win. He's just, <laughs> you know, it, it's so crazy. The narrative between the both two of them, but Chip Kelly's a great play caller. Ryan day doesn't have to worry about that. Ryan day can be aggressive. He has to be smart. But this is a game that he really wants really badly. And it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough as hell going on the road. You know, it's going to be a hostile environment. We were talking, it's probably going to be, what, 80, 20, 90, 10, whatever, Ducks fans, yeah. the Bucks fans. But uh, I think they will, I think they'll get it done. I think it's going to be 30, let's call it just, we'll say there's a field goal for each team. Um, and it's going to be closer than two, two scores. Um, to the eye test like by the end of the day it's going to be 38 to 24 okay ohio state i agree with you on the 24 i'm a little less on ohio state so i had it at 34 24 um okay. yeah i think i think it, i think it's gonna be a good game and then but i do think ohio state like i said i think eventually they're gonna i just think that the physicality that Ohio state's going to be all when they're running the ball and stuff like that is eventually going to start taking its toll on Oregon. And I think the defensive physicality that Oregon's going to have a very hard time as the game's moving, going on, moving the ball. And so I think Ohio state will pull away from him in the second half for a 10 point win. I like it. It's not going to be easy, but you know, I, I've seen Ohio state go on the road before where, they thought that they had no chance because it was a blue blood that's, you know, on the road and the Buckeyes won, you know, fairly comfortably. I saw them go on the road against USC in 08 and get absolutely stopped into the dirt. So I believe that I believe that was the last time they've been to the West Coast, you know, not counting a bowl <laughs> game. So I don't think well, yeah, because I don't think they've played Washington since like I think uh did they go out to the? Uh, I don't think so. I think that was the last West Coast trip for a regular season game. I I, mean, I could be wrong on that one, but well, they play. I think they actually what they played Washington in 07, didn't they? Did they trip? Was that on the road too? Yeah, I don't remember if it was on the road. I remember but... Brian. I think that. Yeah, was I think it was. It was on the road. I think Brandon Sane scores at the very end of that game, and they complain that <laughs> Ohio State was running up the score. If my memory serves me correctly, I believe it does. Um, yeah, I, I don't, so I don't know about a regular season game on the West coast. I think that's, well, they would have went out to Cal, right? In 13 or yeah, 14. They, they did. They did go out to Cal and they actually looked pretty good in that game. They, so yeah, Cal was the last West coast game. I think that would have been what? 12 or 13. Wasn't that when Kenny Guyton lit their asses up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that is a much different caliber of team, but still. The point remains. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah, Cal was, I, uh, yeah, no, you're right. Cal was probably the last time that they've been out was not counting a bowl game. Um, 
Yep. So tomorrow is going to be a hell of a day of football. I Good mean, we got. Day. I mean, two big ones at three thirty with uh, Penn State USC and Texas Oklahoma, and then two big night games with you know us in Oregon and LSU Ole Miss. So it's going to be it's going to be a fun one tomorrow. And there's some decent ones throughout scattered throughout the day. Other ones, I think Notre Dame plays Stanford tomorrow, so that should be kind of interesting. Um, you know, some other ones in there. So looking no. forward to it. I got to ask, um, where the hell's my games now? It, it's in Tuscaloosa, but South Carolina has had some tricky, like close games with teams. You you think they could pull the upset tomorrow? I mean, they're, they're 21 point dogs, but I got to imagine that I got to imagine after being embarrassed by Vanderbilt, you're going to be pretty focused. So I think I, South Carolina will probably get smoked in this game because I think that that will be like a point, uh, you know. We got a Red yeah. River shootout. Yeah. Penn State, USC. I don't know how I feel about that one. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess Penn State, if they could just control running the ball, I think they'll, they'll win easily. But uh, it's those Lincoln teams, you never know, man. And Penn State, Franklin doesn't ever like to get a you know, too, too aggressive with anything. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm not going to go through every game. Like you said, though, it's a good, it's a good Saturday. Everyone needs to watch some games. Hopefully the Buckeyes have another great one. Yeah. All right. Let's call it a night. Thank you everyone for stopping in tonight to the Buckeye bar. I'm John and I'm Mike. Oh, H I O go Buckeyes. Go Buckeyes.